hey, the Berserk video, it's coming. It's just taking a little time. I appreciate the patience. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you here. You need a VPN. Here is my logic. Your information is precious. The internet is sinister. And ExpressVPN is the number one VPN on the market. A day barely goes by that I do not take the, quite frankly, comically simple number of steps to change my IP through ExpressVPN. Pick this, click this, and boom! Not only have I protected my data, but I've also changed my region. And why would I do this, you ask? Well, perhaps I live in America and want to watch the entire Studio Ghibli library on UK Netflix. I would personally recommend Ocean Waves. It is a chill, underrated gem. Or maybe you want to watch AEW on Fight TV and appreciate what a handsome, handsome man Adam Page is. Or actually, that last one, that's private. That's my business. And it shall stay my business because of how ExpressVPN reroutes my connection through their encrypted servers, keeping whatever terrifying, shameful secrets I may have from my internet service provider, network admin, or romantic partner. ExpressVPN.com forward slash iPatchWolf. Click the link in the description for three extra months free. Hello, I am changing the format of these videos from categories to a ranked list because it will be more fun for me and allow me to say things like YOU WON'T BELIEVE WHAT NUMBER ONE IS You may let me know in the comments if you do not like this and I will nearly certainly ignore you So here are my top 15 favorite things of winter 2022 That I, uh, consumed in that period not necessarily released in that period? Cool? Okay, cool. Number 15. Okay, I am putting this at the bottom of the list because I am in it and that is cheating. But I've started a new podcast with my friends over at giantbomb.com called Jeff Jeff's Bizarre Adventure, in which I take my trusty companion, Jeff Bacalar, a man who has never watched a single anime in his entire life, and lead him episode by episode through the wild world of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, alongside our utterly delightful friends Lucy James and Tamor Hussein, resulting in gems such as... This is like, it's a turn-based cartoon, where like <laughs> people take turns exchanging these like wildly dramatic moments, but... They're fucking standing right in front of each other and they're just sort of like letting time pass and it's like no motherfucker you can you can slice someone's head off right now just move just do <laughs> it This is genuinely some of the most fun I've ever had recording a podcast so check it out now on giantbomb.com or anywhere podcasts are on two separate occasions with two different friends, I mentioned the anime My Senpai is Annoying, and both responded with a mildly accusatory, oh, is that another one of your mean girlfriend humiliation things? And no, no it is not. That's what my dress-up darling is. What this show is, is a very chilled slice of life office drama about a bunch of characters who I would very willingly hang out with doing things that don't really matter. I'm not gonna say that this anime is going to change the industry or even that anyone needs to watch it, but it falls kind of perfectly into that category of warm blanket comfort media. And one that captures the unintentional closeness that comes with spending the majority of your waking hours with people who just so happen to work at the same place you do. A closeness that grows more and more alien to me every year as I continue to pour my life energy into these videos. Real human contact, a specter of my past, a void I can only now fill with the facsimiles of real humans. So check out My Senpai is Annoying now. Okay, look, I have something to say and some of you will not like it. Ready? Okay? Like, really ready? Okay. I did not like Mamoru Hosoda's last three movies. Oh, sorry, one sec. Oh, hey, Dad. I've lost how many subscribers?
Well, friends, we had a hell of a run here on Super Eye Patch Wolf. Don't get me wrong here, I'm not some kind of deranged, cackling, lunatic demon. Digimon the movie, Girl Who Leapt Through Time, One Piece Movie 6, and Summer Wars, all bangers. I really enjoy when Mamoru Hosoda directs movies, just less so when he writes them. And I think a lot of the reasons for that can be seen in Bell. Some of the logic connecting events is really just baffling. Mamoru Hosoda has made that internet movie for a third time and I get that this is meant to be a modern day retelling of Beauty and the Beast but that middle third just kind of is Beauty and the Beast. But the reason it's actually on this list is that I think you can nibble criticize a piece of media all day but the moment that piece of media hits you and makes you actually feel something real you are a coward if you do not own up to that. And when that final musical number hit and melted me to my cinema seat, I could not help but be a little moved by this perhaps overly hopeful but earnest message about the internet's capacity to let us shoot our emotions across the great online void and have those emotions change the life of someone we've never met. Also, that confession scene was really good. I... I liked that. You know that bit from Fist of Fury where Bruce Lee physically dismantles all those karate dudes? You know the hallway fight from Old Boy where Choi Min Sik kicks the crap out of like 12 guys with a hammer? Well, Sifu is a game designed to make you feel like that. Not only does the game look incredible with some spectacular art direction and environmental design, the feeling of walking into a large room of enemies and making each one of them regret their life decisions that had brought them to this moment in a single euphoric stream of parried attacks and broken bones, it is mildly euphoric. But a warning, I don't think the game does a particularly good job of explaining its mechanics. Basically, you have four different defensive options, avoids, dodges, blocks, and parries. Sifu demanding that you learn the specific applications of each one, while simultaneously building up the muscle memory to pull them off instinctively. In a rather unfortunate ego-denting learning curve, with trophy data suggesting that less than 27% of players are beating the game's second boss, Sean, which sucks because on the other side of that curve awaits a combat system that asks you several difficult questions a second, but rewards you with a dopamine-induced flow state, the likes of which I have not experienced since Toho 8 Imperishable Night or Thumper. And trust me, when it all clicks and you go back Back and dismantle Sean, humiliate him for his past transgressions, it is one of the most satisfying experiences in games you or I are likely to have this year. You know a uh, swamp thing? He's a, he's a man made out of swamp and there was a, a comic and a, a weird Wes Craven movie and the 90s cartoon had the theme song Wild Thing as its opening, but Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing! You are amazing! If that gets this video copyrighted, I swear to fing God. Well, believe it or not, this character was not a huge success in the 80s, with low sales numbers leading to DC being like, okay, fuck it, let's just give it to this, um, uh, Alan Moore? Chap? Alan Moore being the person who would go on to write Watchmen. Taking this comic about a man who I remind you is literally a pile of swamp and turning it into this existential and occasionally horrifying story that asks the question, how do we know what we are when what we are is no longer what we were? The lifeblood of that narrative, not just Moore's fantastic writing, but the artwork of Stephen Bissett, which captures both the body horror of becoming something different, while simultaneously giving Swamp Thing a real humanity that beats at the heart of this story. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is a game that has repeatedly snapped me over its knee, left me in a crumpled pile at its feet before callously whispering, Persona, you fucking weakling. It is a mean, cruel game in which an enemy can bum rush you from off screen, one hit kill your main character two seconds into the fight, send you tumbling to the game over screen, and oh, 
I'm sorry, have you not saved your game for two hours? Well, let's just check the autosave. Oh, what's this? There is no autosave! Oh! I hate this game. And I love it. It is punishingly difficult, but I really enjoy when a game uses its difficulty to force you to explore each of its mechanics. Roadblock bosses had me crawling through every environment, gameplay nook, and menu screen, desperate to eke out whatever slight advantage I could get. And it really makes you feel like you are trapped in this desperate hellscape between the forces of order and chaos, where God is literally dead and Lucifer looks like this. That hopeless, hellish atmosphere communicated through some incredible music, thick, somber cutscene direction, and Masayuki's horrifying, beautiful character designs, which have been gorgeously realized in 3D. The game doesn't have too much of a story compared to most other JRPGs, but it doesn't matter when the vibe here is so strong. And when you combine that with the razor sharp game design of its battles, it creates a beautifully hellish experience that makes me understand why so many people have been screaming at me to play this series for years. Okay, now we enter the YouTube dimension. This part of the video will not be ranked because I do not want to rank and objectify real people. And also they already have their comments section for that. Just a little YouTube humor there for you folks. There's a lot of channels that break down game design on YouTube. And so if I'm going to recommend you something, it is going to have to stand out. And that is exactly what Leon Massey does. Seriously, this guy can make 20 minute videos on topics as specific as revenge dynamics and fighting games, combo variety and character jump arcs. And not only hone in on the atomic level details that make or break those mechanics, but somehow keep those discussions really entertaining with a dry humor that bleeds through each video. Meaning I, who thinks guns are for nerds, will sit through a 17 minute video on Halo 2's combat meta and come out of it like, huh, I, I never thought about it like that. That is what I sound like when I am not recording videos. My favorite video of Leon Server is simply titled I'm Bad, an exploration on the mindsets we trap ourselves in when we decide we are not good at a video game, rather than examining the specific reasons as to why we aren't getting the results we want. In a video that's kind of about games, but just also kind of about life. Links to everything I talk about in the description below. Internet Archaeologist has for a while now been one of my favourite types of YouTuber, and Aziz is one of my favourite of those. Her speciality being the many strange fandoms that Tumblr spawned in the mid-2010s, which she covers with an acute attention to detail that never fails to bring out the bizarre narratives of things like the saga of Sonic for Real Justice, which if you are not familiar, oh boy, you have got some weird, delightful things ahead of you, my friend, is he also having several videos about Garfield. And I would particularly recommend the disaster of Garfield Eats, which tells the very strange story of a nightmare Garfield restaurant, as well as the enigmatic and possibly insane owner. And why does everything this fictional cat touch go so wrong? I still see him it's like that video never ended like he's still inside me um so check out izzy's channel now she's really cool i think it's a very special category of youtuber that's able to make you care about things that you otherwise wouldn't and fd signifier to me is one of those YouTubers, a rock of sense and just a very lovely man. From pieces on the complicated legacy of Mike Tyson, which is one of the few videos I've seen that earnestly discusses modern day masculinity in a poignant, meaningful way, to his video on Kanye West, which dissects the bizarre, sometimes real, sometimes fake persona that West has surrounded himself in through the language of professional wrestling to just standouts like his video on Drake. And before I watched this video, I knew nothing about Drake, but the way it frames his rise to the peak of hip hop, as well as his fall to the dark side and the impact that would have on this massive subculture as a whole, was just really fascinating. So if you ever watch those YouTube videos that by the end feel like you've gone through this weird, strange journey, that is what FD Signifier does and he is fantastic at it. 
See this woman? See this woman right here? This is the most hardcore JRPG fiend I have ever seen on the internet. Food for Dogs loves Japanese role-playing games with an infectious passion that comes through in each of her different unboxings, LPs, and commentaries. But the video that really made me want to talk about her on this channel today is her hour-long video, How I Got Into Gaming, An Old Lady Discovers a Wonderworld, in which she tells her story of the amusing and occasionally quite tragic series of events that led to a woman much later in life than most accidentally acquiring a PS3, renting the game Rise of the Guardians, and the unintentional journey that began. In a story about how the right piece of media at the wrong time in your life can be a means to help you grow and heal. And what I'd say here is I've been gaming for 30 years. It takes a whole lot to make me reconsider my relationship with the medium, but that's exactly what this video did. And if gaming is a part of your life, I really think that's a story you should hear. Okay, it is now time for my top five favorite things. See, this is exciting. Number five. You have likely heard me at some point go off about how much untapped potential I think there is in animated horror. And oh boy, has the 2022 film The House proven me right. I mean, just look at this movie. Look at these little people with their tiny shrunken faces lost in the sea of their massive swollen skulls. There is a visual language here that crawls inside you, refusing to leave, which may or may not be the plot of one of the three 30-minute movies that make up this horror anthology, exploring the sometimes deeply unsettling relationships we have with our homes in a kind of horror I've only ever really seen touched on by games like Kitty Horror Show's Anatomy, which I know is probably too deep a cut for most of you, but I guarantee there's like at least a few people really losing their mind right now. Two of the three films being genuinely some of the most unsettling watches I have had in quite a long time, and the third film being, well, just kind of Nice. Really? But those first two! If you genuinely don't see the potential for horror and animation, then please, please go watch this movie. Much like the official No More Heroes line of lingerie, or the Goemon Legend of the Mystical Ninja vinyl I own for some reason, the Cuphead animated TV show is one of those weirdly impossible video game tie-ins that is about as good as you dare hope it would be. Retaining 100% of the personality and aesthetic that made the Cuphead video game so great, but transmogrifying it, full of the surreal visual insanity of the cartoons of the 1920s, just without the rampant racism, which is good. From the spectacular animation, to the gorgeous art direction, to how the environments will occasionally become stop motion, to even just how it has imagined different characters of this world like Ribby and Croaks who I love so dearly, everything about this show just works to the point that I was waiting for that monkey's paw to curl and for something to finally disappoint, and it just doesn't. I'm beginning to think it won't. Number three on this list is my Top 5 Favorite Wrestling Matches of 2021. That's right, it's a list within a list and oh, I'm really bad at this. Honorable mention to John Moxley and Kenny Omega's exploding barbed wire deathmatch. Forget the botch, forget the botch. This was an insanely fun, wildly theatrical piece of wrestling insanity and I loved it. Also honorable mention to my actual favorite match of the year, Brian Danielson versus Kenny Omega, but I've already talked about that one and gotta keep the content fresh, boys. I, I, I don't know what that was. Number five, Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks from WrestleMania. Sasha Banks is one of the most wildly creative wrestlers on the planet, which is part of why she was such a perfect villain in her WrestleMania war against Bianca Belair. Someone who, by the time the dust had settled and the kiss of death landed, now felt like a bona fide star in a career-making performance. Now, let's just hope WWE don't fuck that up. No, WWE, no, no, what are you doing? No! Number four, Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker in a lights out match. And holy flying dog, 
bomb this match was hard to watch but in the best way possible and god that instant that moment where Britt Baker her face covered in blood just stares down the camera and smiles that is a star making moment where you know this person is going to be huge. Number 3 Tomohiro Ishii vs Shingo Takagi As many of you know Tomohiro Ishii is a close personal associate of mine. He frequently comes to my apartment, makes me dinner and then we play Mario Party and talk about our feelings. Which is why it's always so shocking when he puts on the visual equivalent of two mountains being loaded into gigantic cannons and fired at each other at light speed. That is what his showdown with Shingo Takagi during the G1 was an absolute fucking war bell to bell with one of the most hilariously brutal ending sequences I have ever seen in wrestling. Number two, Hayashita versus Suryu, which all I can say about this match is it wins my award for this is still wrestling, right? Like they're they're not actually trying to kill each other, right? And number one. CM Punk versus Eddie Kingston. This goddamn, this right here was a story. That of Eddie Kingston, who might just be the secret best thing about All Elite Wrestling, a man who has struggled and bled, nearly, nearly walking away from the industry, only to now, in his late 30s, find success. Here, facing the best in the world, CM Punk. The match drawing on the real life past and animosity between the two to charge it with a heat and emotion that you just cannot fake in a heartbreaking underdog story of Eddie trying to shake his demons, trying to prove who he is not just to punk but the world. Goddamn this, this right here is why I watch wrestling. Okay, number two and like a, a actual number two like um like like on the on the main list not the not the wrestling list which is over now nah, I, I i shouldn't have, i shouldn't have done that you want to know one of my favorite memories from over the holidays getting to eat lots of food yeah watching season of one of the wire with my parents hell yeah hanging out with my tiny dog montgomery no no mont no you're a tiny coward mont and i will never accept you as a part of this family now bert there there is a man who has his life together it was beating delta rune chapter two in one long terry's chocolate orange devouring sitting and look it's like this Undertale is one of my favorite games of all time, and when I first played it back in 2015, I was left with an overwhelming feeling of, God, I I wish I'd made this. I wish every time I'd had a weird idea for a song, a character, or a story, I, I wish I'd just done it, rather than just talking myself out of it. And then in 2021, Delta Ruin Part 2 made me feel that exact same way. God damn, I am, I am really going to try this time. And number one, oh, do you feel that tension? Isn't this way more exciting than the other way? What could it be? What could it be? Oh, wait, I'm, I'm probably going to put Ranking of Kings in the thumbnail of this video, haven't I? And that's going to really ruin the entire point of all this. Ranking of Kings second OP is one of the best OPs of all time and if you disagree with that you are wrong and I will fight you. The way the gorgeously animated characters surge and wane with the rocking yet delicate emotions of the naked hero theme song, the subtle visual dissection of each of those characters as well as the relationships that matter to them most, it is one of those once in a generation hair standing on end OPs no matter how many times you watch it. And the best thing I could say about Ranking of Kings is it is worthy of that OP. If I was to give you a very quick, very dirty summation of what this show is, I would say it's that it captures a lot of what's amazing about One Piece but without the 1000 chapter commitments. A fully formed world of characters all battling for their own loyalties, drives and bonds, viewed through the eyes of Boji, the deaf, mute, insanely likeable protagonist who just is a great little fella doing his best and I love him. Do not be fooled by the cute visuals, this show left me frequently hollowed in shock, jaw hanging agape as its story twists and surges with the unexpected. 
in what is, and I do not say this lightly, a near Mob Psycho 100 level adult that screams anime is not just a single aesthetic or collection of tropes, it is a medium as diverse and powerful as any other. And I love Ranking of Kings because it reminded me of exactly why that is. Oh shit, uh, Elden Ring also came out? That's pretty good. I probably should have put that somewhere on this list. Is there still time? No, no, there's no- Friends, thank you for joining me today. I promise the Berserk video will be here sooner rather than later. This is a big one for me in a lot of ways, and I really want to take the time to just do it right. So I appreciate the patience. In the meantime, you can check out patreon.com forward slash super eyepatchwolf, where you can not only help me create more videos like this, but also come hang out in one of our campfire hangout streams where I talk one-on-one -on -one to patrons, and they're really fun, all for just one dollar. Special thanks this week to Frida Danmo, Amelia Lore, Blue Stop Sign, Eric Gindel, Jens K, and Ideal Ethereal. As ever, find me hosting the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast on twitch.tv forward slash super eyepatchwolf and on Twitter at eyepatchwolf. Friends, take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.